No. Not often, no. Well, I'm not an expert. No. Well. What we mean, though? No. I don't think any of us are experts right now. <laughs> we predicted much wildebeest crossing. Here we go. Back down to the water. Come on, fellows. And everyone, I know you're rooting for the wildebeest, so are we. I'm assuming you are rooting for them to cross, as opposed to not cross. Oh, thank you, Lucia. You uh, know my reputation as the laxative of the bushveld, and you say you're waiting for one of them to poop in front of me. Lucia, uh, thank you. And I hadn't thought about that, I've forgotten about my reputation, and uh, you have now reminded me. And so I feel sad. And look, see the wildebeest are offended by you, Lucia. They've decided they don't want to cross now. Now, you see where they're going there? That small group, I think that's where they're going to go. That's the most likely crossing point there which is in the wrong place for us. Can we position? Let's go. Should we move slowly? Let's go. Now Zoe, we're going to try and move, so many of you are going to get seasick, um, so you might have to close your eyes and just listen to me talk. Um, Zoe, um, you want to know if we have a herd this size of Juma. Zoe, there isn't a herd this size in South Africa. They are, poof, there are probably about only 200 or so wildebeest in the entire Sabi sands. And you'll just get an idea of the view that we're looking at there. There's vast plains, zebra all over the place, sea sickness coming. And we're just going to see if we can't see them. They look like they're going to come, everybody. But I've said that now 58 times. Shot there. Okay, here we go. I will keep an eye on them while we move everyone and if the camera suddenly whips to the side then you will know that they are crossing. I'm just going to ask the final control to tell me if this gets very uncomfortable to watch. I don't mean from an animal point of view, I mean from a jumping screen point of view. Us know. But it also gives you an idea of the landscape that we're looking at, which is amazing. It's just so beautiful, and I'm sure there's quite a lot of wind. We will try and kill the ambient mic. I think it's the ambient mic. I'll just pull it out. <laughs> no, wait, I'll turn it down. Hang on. We're almost there, everybody. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on, everyone. Oh, God, I think I just broke a rib. Uh, oh. Never mind the wildebeest injuries, everyone. Here we are. And this is very good, of course, this experiment we're doing, because we need to know if we can actually move and film at the same time. Oh. If I say it, if I say a bad word, I apologize profusely in advance. <laughs> I'm having my left left side of my rib cage crushed. Wallington on my right slamming into me. He's slamming into the other side. Oh, oh, wingnut. Thank you for your question. You say, do they need to cross before it gets dark? Um, well, yes, ideally they do. Straight, straight. But um, wingnut, I don't think that that's necessarily going to. I don't think that's necessarily going to inspire them. I. They've now turned round again, believe it or not. Now, this is not going to be ideal, everybody. But there are lots of cars here at the moment. Leopard claw. <laughs> I think you want to know where, when the gazelles cross. Um, pretty much the same. I don't think they cross as frequently as the wildebeest, but they do it every so often. 
um, you know, from time to time. I don't think they do it nearly as frequently as the wildebeest do because they don't, of course. In fact, there are two of them, Graham. I don't know if you.